This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, the one in Best of One. And today in the arena, we are playing a mono green deck again. And this one is special because uh, it's Ozolith. It's an Ozolith mono green deck. Ozolith is a weird card that has weird devoted following on my Twitch channel. People get really excited about the Ozolith. And for one mana, you get a legendary artifact that whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put those counters on the Ozolith. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you may move all counters from Ozolith to target creature. Pretty straightforward. You guys probably see plus one, plus one counters all the time from Stone Coil Serpent, Scavenging News from Yorvo, from... The Great Henge, lots of plus one, plus one counters. So that makes sense with the Ozolith. But for me, the fun, awesome to do with the Ozolith is this card, Crystalline Giant, also known as Mikogashira G-Weapon. And uh, this artifact creature, Giant, gets a counter, a random counter at the beginning of combat. And it can be Flying, First Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, Vigilance, or plus one, plus one. 10 different options. So getting those ability counters and moving them around with the Ozolith is freaking sweet, and that's hopefully the kind of show I'm going to give you today. Aside from that, we've got sweet ways to use all those plus one, plus one counters to create out of nowhere kills by giving our creature trample. If our creature has trample because of a gem raiser or because of a one of Garrick's uprising, or because it just had trample anyway, like a stone coil serpent, or it received a trample counter from the crystalline giant or the ozolith, ram through can deal a ton of damage. So that is why we run a whole bunch of ram throughs. Scavenging ooze gains counters as creatures die. When creatures die, they put counters on the ozolith. It's a nice little chain. Basically, unlike most creatures with plus one plus one counters, when they die, the creature is gone, and everything good about the creature is usually gone. With the ozolith, a piece of that creature stays with you. It's kind of sweet. So I'm excited to try this out. I do not think this is the optimal way to play mono green, but I'm just, I'm trying to have me a bit of fun as we wait for those new cards. Zendikar cards are getting spoiled. I'm talking about them on stream Monday through Thursday. I'm talking about them on the Arena Craft podcast. Make sure you like and subscribe to that YouTube channel, Arena Craft Podcast, and they look freaking sweet. So I'm just kind of trying to buy another week or so, and then we're going to be rolling in Zendikar. But until then, I'm trying to find the fun little things I can do, and the Ozolith is up there. This is a really enjoyable card. So let's dive in and let the plus one plus one counter and various ability counter and whatever all of the counters let's let all the counter nonsense begin we are on the play against a yorian deck with a curve that does powerful things so that's a keep marcel toto did you bring wraths i don't know Let's find out. Opening on the tap land, the Fable Passage, means their hand probably doesn't have four lands in it. Or they have a turn two play that involves that island that they really need. We're just a stone coil machine over here. Hopefully they have a whole bunch of multicolor cards that just suck. <laughs> Play an artifact or enchantment. I dare you. I double dare you. They do. <laughs> okay. Love it. Oh man, Dub's questing beast. We're going to be looking at the top of the deck saying where, my friends. Saying where is that forest? Take seven. Down to 12 already. Do you have something for three mana that 
helps the situation. A counter spell is not it. Banishing light is it. Good job. Ram through. Combo disassembled. Play another one. Is there a shatter the sky waiting for me? That missed land drop. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, okay, would have loved it a turn sooner, but we will take it. Probably an Elspeth Conquers Death. The opponents had a good draw. They are, their curve has been perfect. Everything about their draw in their 80 card Yorian deck has been perfect. They haven't had to spend a single turn doing something they don't want to do. We've missed a land drop, but they're still down to just three. Archon, okay. That will not save you. That will not save you. That is a bite, not a fight. Yep, that won't save you either. He'll make a 2 2 that the can't block the questing beast. It won't even have lifelink. <laughs> oh my goodness. When you think about how good their draw was, it's this is absolutely insane. And we didn't even draw the Ozolith. We are up against a diamond-ranked red mage, Chandra Cosplay, who has a very obnoxious dog that I have to mute, but apparently I can't do that until I keep seven. All right, the big question I'm wondering is will Scavenging Ooze get shocked? Probably. It would be nice to draw any other creature. <gasps> Mono green. Maybe. I'm a bit surprised. All right, we need the creature to be smaller or same size as Scavenging Ooze, so Ram through kills it. Ta-da! Oh my goodness, the ramming. The ramming that we're doing. It's definitely a one-dimensional hand, and it's scaring me, to be honest. But... We get to kill the opponent's creature, make a 3-3, and slap them in the face. And now if our ooze dies, we get something. <gasps> okay, this is this is kind of fun. Our ability to kill their creatures is scaling up as our ooze is growing, and we just keep killing their next creature. <laughs> now we're up to a 4-4. There's also a play we can make that's kind of cute. We can play the Stone Cold for zero, grow the ooze to a five, and ram through. Oh my gosh. Guys, check out my mono green Ozolith Tempo deck. Isn't it sweet? Don't you love it? <laughs> what? <laughs> what an ooze solo. This is absolutely absurd. We even have the Great Henge for next turn. Probably. We have to draw a land, or we have to get another creature into the yard, and the opponent's at 9. They might even have to block. They have their own ooze now. There's our land. What to do? I think we play the Henge and the Stone Coil. Pretty, pretty clean. The opponent, while throwing a card every turn into the Ooze Abyss, they're, they've still got three cards in hand. They're not done. And if they have a gem razor, that's pretty good. And we are out of gas. We actually we have a bit of a board advantage, but we're out of things to do. Uh-oh. Big uh-oh. Big uh-oh. It's doing the green thing. Guys, the deck is doing the green thing. You know the one. The green thing is how the deck just falls a freaking part sometimes, man. It just stops drawing creatures. 
I don't know why my decks do this, but they do. They they completely cease to draw creatures eventually. I'm sure it doesn't help that I run four copies of the Azalith, but I'm trying to do something different here. I'm trying to have some fun. Okay, and our opponent, despite having the first three creatures wiped out, just has an army still. Like, this game feels so weird. Like, it wasn't, it was not supposed to be this way. They should make a 3-3. There you go. Take 12. Down to 14. Alright. That's a creature. That's a creature. Just in case we draw more. Why would we do that? Alright. Put the counters over here. Put a counter here. Take that action. Send it in. Opponent has to do something about this. And when they trade with it, the counters go on the Ozolith. So we get to kill the Gargaroth. Opponent making another 3-3. Three, three. The weapon's ready for that. Okay, three life, they say. Look at me. Lord in those land. That Garrick is scary, man. It's a lot of damage, but this is also a lot of damage. And if it gets any kind of evasion, like Menace, we're going to be rolling. If we can give it Trample with a card like a Gem Razor, we're going to be rolling. Like, we're, we're close. We could block this with the Death Touch, but I think we try to win. Yes, yes, eat graveyards. I know. I know you can do that. Yep. How about Embercleave? Do you have that? That would be a pretty sexy finish for you. No. All right, off the top. Big draw. Big draw. What a troll job. All right, what do we get for the counter? Lifelink? Oh, baby. No trample, though. So they can jump here and then swing back, but we're at 20-something. Should we hold up? I mean, they don't have a good attack, right? Not really. Ten ten Death Touch Lifelink. We're gunning for Trample, though, or a Gem Razor off the top. Nine nine gargs. What? Okay, they're digging. They're digging for the answer. It's risky. It's so risky. I gained ten frickin' life. What you got? Bone Crusher Giant. Okay, that works. But I get all these counters on the Ozolith. All we have to do is draw a freaking creature and rebuild. The opponent on the verge of an emblem I've never seen, Garrick. Uh, minus seven, at the beginning of your end step, you may search your library for a creature card and put it onto the battlefield. At the beginning of your end step? Ah, uh, well, it's okay. It's good. Oh, you are late. To the battlefield. Come on, questing beast. How does he do that? We have located the creatures, you guys. I just wish they'd been in the other order so I could end this game. All right, you. Take that action. Wow. Um, hi -ya. Someone's going under a bus. A very large bus. 
everybody in front? Oh my goodness. Okay. Cool. Next turn, the trample creature gets all these counters. That is probably enough to kill the opponent. Unless they draw a gem razor and blow up the Ozolith. Rugged Highlands. Nope. Let's see that minus seven. You get any creature from your deck. What can solve this problem? You don't get to mutate with it. So if you have a Thrashing Brontodon, like that will do it. But who plays that card? Nobody plays that card. Nobody. Kogla, too slow. Terror of the Peaks. Wow, the flood just never stopped, did it? 13-13. Oh my goodness. They're ganging up. Staying alive. Down to one! The lifelink still active. <laughs> what is this game? Dude. It's epic. This freaking epic man. His hand looks eerily familiar to the last game. Like, like super eerily familiar. Not on the play though, which made a huge difference in the last game for the scavenging ooze putting us way ahead. So I'm nervous. I'm very nervous, but we will try. Goosey goosey. The card I basically removed from the deck to play the Ozolith. We will now establish who was right. Of course, if you go on the play like Yorvok <laughs> or Garrick's Harbinger, you were right. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. No! No! Okay then. That's the way we're gonna be. Just turn two. Uh, play, my, my, just smash my turn one Ozolith. Just. What the hell? What the actual hell? I hate you. You are now arch enemy confirmed. I want terrible things to happen to you. Let's hope they don't draw ram throughs, and we do. I think that's where we're at now. The the power of going first, my friends. The true power of being first. Disgusting. Absolutely sickening. Okay, that did not grow the Yorvo. We need the land. Badly. We get it. We can play an ooze, grow this. We can play a ram through, kill this. <clears throat> I think that's the right play. Also, where's my frickin' gem razor, dude? Or we can double ram through, kill, kill. Leave the opponent with one, four, four. But if they have another gem razor, that's a big ouch. Maybe we just say go and see what they do. Yeah. But, oh, I really want to set up for, like, Great Henge and a Scavenging Ooze next turn, and I guess we'd have to draw a land to do that. No, let's make sure we remove stuff. They don't have a Ram through, or they would have played it last turn. If they do, it's a bit of a blowout, if they just top deck one here. But if they go for a Primal Might, we're going to feel really good. Okay, that does not grow the Yorvo, so we're going to wait for them to commit one more time. And there it is. All right. Shoot that. Here's your beastie. And shoot that. All right. We've got some things dead. The opponent can still attack with their stone coil, though. But that depends if they want to trade it with Yorvo. And since Yorvo is legendary, people sometimes decline this trade because if I have another Yorvo in my hand, they want Yorvo stranded there. 
So, we miss on the land, which we wanted to go henge into ooze pretty badly. We can play another ooze and have this as a 6-6 six -six to fight the questing beast. I think that's a good idea. Opponent can't stop all of our oozes. And can we stabilize? Plus, having the biggest creature means cards like Ram Through don't work. If they have a Primal Might, that will work. And that's very scary. That is very, very scary. I did not like having to cut Primal Might from this deck, but the power of a, a Ram Through with a Trample creature and an Ozolith was just too appealing. Another Lovestruck Beast. Okay, we're in it. But we're going to do the thing here where we play the Henge and draw no creatures. <gasps> By George, did we draw a creature? And is it a good one? The opponent with the nice. Oh, it's oh, it's getting nicer. You're really gonna like it. They GG. <laughs> we'll see about that. Um, I mean, you turned to gem raised my Ozolith, man. There's no way I should be in this game. How you no kill me? How you no kill me? Give me the Mecha Godzilla. That's cool. That is very cool. Keep it coming. Oh, there's an Ozolith. I'm not attacking. I got time. We're milking this one. We are milking this one a little bit. Not to be mean. It's just, I'm just playing safe. I don't want to trade my biggest creature for their two five fives. The oozes will get a lot bigger. Like, in time, this is going to be great. But first, we need to play the Ozolith. So that we get all these counters back if bad things happen. And now we can attack. Also don't want to put oozy boys in bad situations. We'll get to that. Plenty of time for this stuff. Yeah, yeah, you said that before and you didn't scoop. Kind of a kind of a weird thing to do. It's a good game and then keep just throwing more fodder onto the battlefield. I don't get it. Mama didn't raise me like that. When I was a wee CGB. Born in a card store during a northern Michigan blizzard. I learned that the manners of good game where you say good game and then you concede. Or even better, you concede and then you say good game. I don't know what the kids are doing these days, man. They're saying good game, but then they sit there. They just sit there playing their fodder. And it makes me think they're trying to trick me. It makes me think they're not being real. I don't get, like, like... You know, my old schoolness doesn't get the kids these days, man. Kids these days. All right, where you want all this action? This has trample? Sweet. Let's go. Let's put it over here. I mean, it's, we got that reach, that first strike, that death touch. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. Come at me, bro. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I said good game back the first time. You're taking it? Okay, we're done now. All right. Got him. <gasps> so close. See, I bet if they had scooped the first time they said good game, we'd be we'd be spamming nice in comments right now. Rematch. Scored, honey. Will you do the Grazer thing again? Is it turn one goose, turn two gem razor to thwart my Ozolith? Yep, there we go. I, I, I see you over there. I see you. You're here for revenge. You're here for revenge. Let's not pretend. Okay, so they unless they have a Wildborn Preserver, they won't have the Gem Razor. And I have an interesting choice. If I play the Stone Coil, it has counters. If it dies, we get them on the Ozolith. 
and I think that's a little better than playing the ooze now when it could pretty easily die and nothing good would come of it. The ooze can also grow the Yorvo because it is green, and we have a lot of colorless creatures in the deck, so that becomes an issue more than you'd think. Here's Yorvo. Opponent looking good for their gem razor. No! Land drop missed. Not like this, dudes. The game mana screwed me. On the draw, we're about like 50-50, basically, to get there. And, yep, good game. From one mana screwed hand to this. <laughs> this is horrible. I, okay, game, game was like winning with the Ozolith is actually not what we had in mind, so you don't get to win for the rest of the day. We're gonna, just going to have to brawl our way through an absolutely abysmal uh, set of hands and draws. I'm glad we held this back. This was one of the cards I thought about, didn't quite articulate it. And now we'll see if the opponent's ready with the removal spell, and if we just, the game's over. Hesitation. Brain, brain neurons firing. Pathetically easy. The opponent is just laughing at me now. Just laughing. <laughs> the, the weird thing is, why not the Harbinger? You get to dig deeper for the creature. It's kind of a very weird play on their part. Well, no flawless victory for you. Got him thinking. Okay. Horn Beetle, sure. With a Yorvo in hand? It's awkward. Okay, that's a fight, so the Harbinger dies. So the opponent's going to go all in on their Scoos. Alright, we're going to do a Gem Razor check. Wait a minute. Never mind. Are we? So we could play a really large Serpent and use a Ram through. And then next turn we'd have the Henge. The opponent would need a Gem Razor off the top. How many creatures are in the graveyard? Just two? So they can get this to five, not six. This grows, which is frustrating. But next turn we can play Henge, Questing Beast, and Ram through. I think. It's close. I might be one mana short of that. But I think this is the play. They need an untapped land to primal might their way through. And they don't have that. Alright, Henge. And there's the forest. So. Henge, Henge. One, two, three, then one, two. It's actually not enough to hold up ram through but i think we do this anyway another land life is hard man what are you gonna do about this questy boy two a double block is they both die so that hits hinge on hinge violence why all right, this is still right on the line where we can kill it before it gets too much bigger. This is a big turn. We need a draw. I hate mono green. I freaking hate it. Mono green is the worst. The absolute worst. What you got? Take it all. Okay. Any stuff in graveyard? No. All right. When the farmer fertilizes crops, you're going to be blessed. Make a 3-3. Three, three. Sure. How are we going to get this lethal, guys? 
Where's it gonna come from? There's another ooze. How do they have so many frickin' cards? I can't draw cards. They can draw nothing but cards. I... Ugh. I hate mono green. It's the worst. The absolute worst deck in the history of the world. All right, how do we live? We have to use the ram through here. We can get an extra damage by ramming through off the stone coil, though, if we do it to one of the five fives. And then the questing beast has to block... May as well block the Yorvo. Freaking hate this game, man. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oh, we're back on the mono green hate train. But you see, you see it. You see the problem. You see it. It's so infuriating to just flood out when you have a henge. You go through so much for the henge, and then it gives you nothing. The deck gives me nothing, man. Okay, we've been man mana screwed. We've been mana flooded. We should be back to normal. I should be able to keep a hand and have a chance. Let's go. And the truth is, there's no such thing as I should be able to this or that. It's RNG is a heartless beast, but I characterize RNG for your entertainment. The entertainment value. You're welcome. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoy it. If you're still here, you probably do. If my last rant didn't get me a few, I can't watch this anymore. Is I don't know what will, man. I don't know what will. Get out of here, Dover. Literally nobody asked you to be here, Dovey. So this is a bit of a tempo play that I might not even make if I didn't have second ram through. All right, the dog tribal is here. Let's keep the aggression coming and I'm just going to play one of these as a 4-4. Four -four. Just has 4-4 four -four gem razor. I mean, if you're going to Winota here and throw away the Watchdog, I think I'm okay with that. Bassie's Lutenny. Counter there. 4-5 achieved. Not bad. I don't know what the heck I'm supposed to do now. But again, the Winota only goes for one. If I Gem Raise here, this is a 5-5. Five five. If it attacks, they double block. It's not good. Don't really want to lose my ooze that way. Ram through can trade one creature and the other for the lieutenant. Let's just mutate here and set up the ram through to be bigger next turn. And we'll sit on our Ozolith. Whenever an opponent attacks with creatures, if two or more. Alright, settle in. This is going to get funky. I have not seen Mangar the Diplomat in a while. If two or more of those creatures are attacking you and or Planeswalkers draw a card, whenever an opponent casts their second spell, each turn draw a card. I hate this deck so much. I mean, I love the Ozolith. I love a lot of things the deck can do. I love the Giants. The problem is I never draw these cards. All I draw is the freaking Flood. That's all I do. I either miss my third land drop and don't play, or I flood to hell. But Still a lot of magic to be played here. Still a lot that could happen. The pack leader is pretty frustrating. I, what the hell is going on? What the... I've only drawn three different cards. Four different cards, forest, but like, what? It's 
So this is prevent all combat damage with, that would be dealt to dogs. It has to be combat damage though. And it's a trigger. And so it only works on these two. So I can just block those two. So the opponent still can't do anything. All right. Hello, Henge. <laughs> Get to just throw it on the table and do nothing. Yeah. Solidarity. That is absolutely insane. We have to do something like this so that then if all these die, the opponent gets knights. Maybe I'm supposed to let that happen. No, the, the counter gets on the lieutenant. Pack leader. Like, what am I supposed to do here? I think I take out the pack leader. Opponent falls to 11. Their creatures are freaking amazing. And they've got the Magmut. And I'm sure that there's a Winota in my future because there's enough humans to pay it off. Give me that boy. All right, it's gonna get, it's gonna get weird. Uprising. Oh, look, all my creatures have trample now. <laughs> God. <laughs> All right, give me another one of these. Opponent gets a card. We're about to find out if they have Winota. And if they do, I don't think I can really compete, but alas, we try. Do it. Winota? You got all these crappy dogs. Do you have the payoff? No. What do you do? When it attacks, other creatures get plus one, plus one. Okay. Freaking hate this deck. <laughs> um, do I attack? We can attack with a creature. The opponent's life total is pretty low. We don't want to attack with the Scoos. You. Go get him. Yes, they can block with the Lieutenant, but they might be scared too. It's kind of an interesting bluff. Because if they do, they might lose the ability to make a bunch of Knights. And I need to get some counters on this frickin' Ozolith, and I need to grow this frickin' Ooze. Okay. Love it. Thank you. Opponent gets a knight. Makes their Winota a little better. Double down on Henge for the life. And the turn. Here we go, guys. Get ready. Get ready. It's gonna be ugly. Uh-huh. Is that the best you can do? Second lieutenant. Good. With? Can't see what it is. Victory's envoy. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one, plus one counter on each other creature you control. No big deal. Uh, give me that. All right, this does not have indestructible and as a card we probably want to kill. This is a 14-4, but it doesn't have trample, so we can put this right there, no problem. Protection from multicolor. This thing's obnoxious as hell, but I don't think we can afford to take it out right now. This thing we need to take out because it's gonna generate so many freaking knights, so that's a good block. Uh, this thing is a 7-8, ugh. It's not indestructible, right? Oh, it is. Never mind. All right. 
Where are the things that are not indestructible? You're not indestructible and you have no counters. So you're a free-ish block and same with you. And we take a million, which whatever. If we're dead to that, so be it. It's not getting much better in here. Negative one? No! <laughs> well, math is for blockers, but I'm still not doing it. Mono green rematch number three. This time we are on the play. We know our opponent plays gem razor. We've played against them twice already. So yippee. Let's do it. Let's get wrecked by your gem raising ways. This is the rubber match. We're officially a best of three channel. Can our opponent go Goose Grazer on us? Goose Razor, not Grazer, Razor, twice in one day. Magic is at least that messed up. It's probably about to happen. Here's some bait. Would you like to kill the Stone Cold Serpent instead? Hmm. Kill it, they did not. Let's get the counters piling up. And we want to push for trades. Oh, Hexproof. That is the, that is like the best thing to hit if our Ozolith sticks around. The Hexproof counter going on these creatures with the Ozolith is, feels good, man. All right, Questing Beast. Are you attacking? Questing Beast is attacking. If we block, the Hexproof counter can go on another creature, like the other Mecha Godzilla weapon, but I think we just buy some time. I don't think there's anything wrong with buying some time. Oof. All right, more counters for the Mecha Godzillas. Even though that's not what they is. We could attack. Like if the opponent blocks here, and this has death touch, you don't want to trade with that either. Yeah, the opponent really doesn't have good blocks because the Ozolith just keeps piling up awesomeness. And we get to stay aggressive. I likes. After all, we have our own questing beast. And eventually the opponent probably needs to block. Because all these abilities will eventually hit a lifelink, an evasion, something. Triple stone call serpent? Like, what? What's the world coming to? They're feeling lovey-dovey. Do I want to get the first strike onto the death touch? Kind of. I mean, that's really good. And if we hit Vigilance, it's just unbelievable. But I, mm, let's take it for one more turn. Because getting two of these counters a turn is so much better than getting one. What the hell? <laughs> Magic is so stupid. All right, two Death Touch and a Menace. Well, we don't quite have Lethal, and now we have a First Strike. No, we don't have a First Strike. And this one has First Strike. Wait, we do have a First Strike Death Touch. Oh, that's freaking sweet. But this one's hexproof. And the opponent's been resisting blocking this because they don't want these to get bigger. All right, let's keep the pressure on with the menace and let's keep throwing the stone coil under the bus. I wish this had the hexproof counter though. I'm very nervous holding it back. We might just be dead, but. With a stone coil and another blocker, as long as I get through a turn, I'll be feeling good. The opponent really doesn't want to kill the stone coil and then have those counters end up somewhere else. Close game. Close game. How many land drops will CGB miss on the way out the door? Opponent as their head. And they got goose. And they can eat the food. Pretty strong. Your vow.
but the brick wall exists and the mana screw exists hate this hate this so much do we have vigilance we do excellent and we have lifelink over here do we keep throwing these at the opponent they're gaining life every turn from the henge now I think we throw one of them at the opponent, and it should be the 2-2. Two -two. Sure. I don't think they remember the first... Too many abilities, man. Too many abilities. Our opponent's going into blocking. First strike, death touch, and lifelink. Yorvo just dies. Ozolith has all these counters. If the opponent has a gem raiser now, my heart is going to shatter. But let's see what happens. Oh, wait, it has hexproof. It has hexproof. Mm, yeah, baby. Come at me. Come at my hexproof Ozolith. Come and get it. Wait, what? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, buddy. That's right. What are you gonna do now? Okay, you, you still have a lot of really good cards. You might be able to do stuff. <laughs> it's totally doable, actually. All right. That's one option. This is another. It would kill both though, so I don't like that. And then if these both die, we're really looking for a land off the top where we're really dead. We, I don't know, are we just supposed to take this? Because as long as we have one of these next turn, what happens? It goes to 10, that's not enough. That's not really enough, but we do need the lifelink, the vigilance, everything else. Um, if they have a ram through, we're dead meat anyway. They get to grow this ooze quite a bit. This is tough. All right, I can't beat a ram through or a removal spell. We've got to go for it. They have enough life that there's no way I'm going to kill them next turn. This game's going to go for at least two more turns with them having Henge and Ooze. We have to play aggressive. We have to take risk. It's going to be a Hexproof, Menace, Vigilance, First Strike, Death Touch, Lifelink. The First Strike goes... Oh, and there's Trample. There's freaking Trample. Baby. How does he do it? What you gonna do when the largest, most powerful gem raiser of all comes for you? The only thing missing is Double Strike. Dub's Henge. If there's one thing I've proven in this video, it's how much Henge sucks. <laughs> you play the Henge, you're just gonna flood out. You may as well not even try. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There's the GG's. There's the GG's. I see you over there with the GG's. Get wrecked. <laughs> uh, but, but good best of three seri series, in actual honesty. Good luck out there. Now you know. Ozolith greater than Henge. And we are back for the post-game wrap-up. What did we learn today? We learned how much I hate the great Henge and how much I'm going to keep coming back because that promise of power, life, and card draw is too much. So I'm going to... It. I, I think we know. We know at this point there are two things in life that I hate. One is losing to Mono Red. The other is 
playing the Great Henge and drawing zero creatures for the rest of the game. Just, it's it's my tilt, my weakness, my kryptonite, my Achilles heel, my soft spot. And no matter how much I say I hate it, I bet I'll be back. Cool Kids Club know this. There's probably a bunch of people who unsubbed and they'll never know. They'll never know that it was all a show Anyway, the the deck is really fun. I probably need to scale back on the gem raisers and questing beasts. I think there was a bit too much of this going on, and since they don't have counters themselves, they're not very efficient. The Garrick's Uprising was too much. So I would cut this. I would trim one each, probably, of these, and I would play another card that has or gains plus one plus one counters. The two I have my eye on are Nessie and Horn Beetle, Wildborn Preserver. I also considered Wildwood Hydra because with so many things triggering and moving counters around, the Wildwood, it's the Wildwood Scourge. Wildwood Scourge that is a Hydra. Wildwood Scourge seems like it would get pretty big and be exciting. So that is the other card I might play in the deck. Kind of janky, but this deck is a little janky. Don't be afraid to go janky with this. Don't take this deck too seriously. You're gonna take the fun out of the worshiping the often terrible, but often absurdly fun Ozolith. So. With that in mind, we'll put a wrap on this one and we'll give the Cool Kids Club end of video shout out to uh, a, new, a new streamer. They're, they're new to magic streaming. You've probably never heard of them. It's it's me. It's it's CGB. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cringe. Uh, me watching me on YouTube. It's CGB. Uh, yeah. Here's what's up. I stream. I'm always surprised that people stop by my stream and they say, I didn't know you stream. And I'm like, I've been streaming for many years, I, over three years, I think over four years, not actually sure. And I stream Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from four Eastern to six Eastern, or in other words, the two hours after my video goes live. And I've been doing that a really long time and people from YouTube come over and they hang out and it's fun, like we have fun. So uh, you are invited to come out as well, but I'm going to give you the straight up nitty gritty truth about my streams. First of all, people ask this all the time. Why are my VODs subscriber only? Because I play music that I shouldn't and it gets muted and people, when it's free, people complain about the quality of the VODs with all the muted parts of the video. When it's not free, my subs never complain about this because they know how Twitch works, right? So it's making my life a little easier, quite honestly. And it's a good enough reason for me. You don't know until you've been in my shoes and you receive DMs all day, every day. Your video is muted. What's wrong with it? I want the unmuted version. Uh, it's because I play music. Well, don't play that music. Nobody cares about the music. Shut up. Everybody cares about the music. Most importantly, moi cares about the music. All right. I do a lot of things for you guys. The music's for freaking me. All right. Thing number two that you need to know about my Twitch streams. It's, it, I, it's kind of a different character. <laughs> it's kind of a different guy. Like a lot of you remember evil CGB probably. Um... CGV on Twitch is a lot closer to evil CGB than he is to YouTube CGB. Some of you may get tilted by this. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm a pretty honest, heartfelt guy in my outros, but I also play a very exaggerated character version of myself for most of the videos. <gasps> Acting! And... On Twitch, I play an extremely exaggerated character of myself, who's kind of evil. So, if you're into it, come watch it, enjoy it. If you're not into it, that's okay. Don't feel like you're hurt because this is the real CGB. None of, like, it's all me. It's all different sides of my personality. Um, in reality, I'm a, probably a pretty nice guy to know, but I also can be a bit of a jerk sometimes when I get offended or frustrated or upset. None of this is weird. None of this makes somebody not worth supporting or not worth following. Like, uh, it's, it doesn't have to be that polarizing. It's all different sides of the same coin, which hopefully you enjoy. But anyway, if you want to check me out live, that sounded like an e-girl thing to say. If you want to check out my live streams, come to Twitch. 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's a good time. 
have fun. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.